good. Okay, so we're rolling. So I'm here with uh, Harvey Horn for Grassroots Boxing. Thanks for uh, giving us a bit of your time today. It was no nice worries, and sunny man. outside. <laughs> um, all right, cool. Well, what we want to do is want to find out a little bit about you. Um, so yeah, sure, let's start from the beginning. So um, what age did you start boxing and what influenced you to become a boxer? Um, my dad definitely influenced me. I've done little bits and pieces. I played football, I swam. Done, um, I've done quite a few little bit, always active, always sport. I've got two, two younger brothers as well, so he's always doing something. But um, I started off with karate, done all right at it, and um, I think I was a little bit of a, not a menace, but a thing I was a little man syndrome. So um, my old man said, Take, like, have a go with the boxing, he'd boxed before. And um, I started walking in the gym, I think, one month off my 11th birthday. Got carded up on my 11th, uh, on my birthday, got carded up. I had a fight a couple of weeks later, and I'm in the gym about three weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Got beat, but uh, how was it though? Like the whole experience, of, you know, for your first fight. And... First one, it, it was just a big blur. I remember feeling so nervous. It was against the West Ham boy on a West Ham show, and I was just from a little club called Gator out the way, and I was fighting this bloke that was. I, I remember walking around. I was only I was 25 kilo. I was my fight, so I was like a bag of screed. Mm. But, um, yeah, ended up. It was just a blur of nerves, and I got beat. Got beat on a split decision. I eventually got that bloke back, funnily enough. We um, stopped him, yeah, stopped him in the first round a couple of years later. But um, yeah, just a blur of nerves, it's all of that. And I thought, I can't do this now, oh, this is too stressful. And um, I had a couple more and I lost both of them. I lost my first three. So um, after that, my dad said to me, he went, listen, if you don't fancy it, he went, just knock it on the head. I thought, I can't go out and I lost. Like, so I went back and I, I went undefeated for about three, four years after that, I think. Yeah. So, after the first loss, um, what? I suppose, how did it make you feel? And that's all right. How did the first three losses in a row? What you just said touched upon that you know you felt like kind of giving it up, but like, what was what was your like the people around you, trainers and Sam? What were they um, saying about it? My trainers obviously wanted me to carry on because mm. they knew what I was capable of. Um, Do you think it was overall by the occasion, perhaps? No, or? you know what? I'll be honest, I, my first, I had a couple of dodgy decisions, but also I seemed to freeze when I was there, like because. Um, I was originally an orthodox and um, I turned south, I kept turning south for in the fire and they was going, no, go back orthodox, go back orthodox. Was that, was that um, the tactics or was that just No, no, to... I just kept changing south for for some reason and um, I'm right-handed so I should be orthodox. But I was coming out orthodox, trained as an orthodox, but I kept coming out south and I was going, what are you doing? Keep doing. And um, eventually, obviously now I'm a southpaw, but um, I think maybe then, maybe I was just, I should have been a southpaw and I was being trained as orthodox, it didn't work out. But um, I actually switched in the fourth round, I, I sort of switched off to my corners tactics and come out the whole fight southpaw and ended up winning. I went undefeated for about, yeah, about five years. So I think maybe just a little bit, should have been a southpaw. Yeah. 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 How many amateur fights in total did you have? Uh, just over 80, just over 80 fights. Um, that's with internationals, but um, including internationals, I lost 11. 11, yeah, 10 or 11 I lost. But it's actually, it's a good record considering I'm fighting the best in, like I only lost four times in England. So after that, they was all amateurs. But I was losing, uh, when you're fighting top level opposition all the time, you are like, it's, you're fighting the number one of their country, constantly, you're always in with the number one. And um, you're bound to lose a couple, you know, mm. but I think the, the fact that I had a winning record um, spoke a lot of me, I think. Mm. What was the uh, what was the honours, uh, major honours that you won? Um, uh, as a junior, I won six junior and youth national titles. I won the senior ABAs at 18. Um, I won two junior tri-nations, um, European men's silver medal, European under 22 gold medal, Three international golds for GB as a senior, one bronze and one silver. Um, I competed in the first ever European Games in 2015. I was part of the World Series of Boxing, the um, yeah. WSB. I had four fights in that, I won three and so lost one. Station, yeah, it? yeah, I won three out of that, lost one. Lost to the Mexican world number three. But um, yeah, so I've been about, I've had a few bits, yeah. yeah. That's about it. Yeah. So when uh, you uh, transition from the um, amateurs to the pros. What, was that an easy decision or a hard decision? Um, How long I did it think, take? Yeah, I was on GB. I, I quite enjoyed the um, GB setup, but I think what happened was um, the, the Olympics come round in 2016, and I was in the number one position for the year before. <laughs> for, the, for the whole year before, I was in the number one position to go, and um, so uh, something came up or whatever, and Galal Yafai went instead of me. 
and um, which it's, I was gutted. I felt I deserved to go. They obviously had their reasons for picking him over me, but um, I felt like I had deserved the chance. And as I'd been there longer, I'd won more. And so I think after that, I stayed on GB for another eight months. But it just it hurt so bad, you know, like being there, knowing that that, that it was taken away from me last minute. And um, maybe it was myself because, like I said, I was in the position, in number one position for about a year. So maybe I got complacent and I thought that I was set to go. And he was up and coming, young, hungry, up and coming fighter. And um, maybe they they thought he deserved to go more. But either way, it hurt so bad. I thought, I mean, I was inconsolable for a couple of months after that. It's, it's every youngster's dream, ain't it? Going to the Olympics. And I really thought, out of, out of all the Olympics, I beat five of them that had already gone. Did they give yeah. you a reason why? Um, sort of. You, you get sent to qualifiers. You get sent to the, um, the qualifiers. You can't just go to the Olympics. They don't say you go. Mm. So you have to get through the qualifiers. But it's whoever gets picked to go to the qualifiers. Me and Galau have, have been fighting, but we're, yeah. we're good quality fighters. So I knew that whoever went to the first qualifier was going to qualify because we knew that the competition around, we was going to beat them. Mm. We was like number, number two and three in Europe. And... Um, yeah, so when he went, I knew that it was over then, because I thought he's, he's going to qualify, he's definitely going to qualify, and he did, he ended up winning the tournament. So, yeah, I, I think the reason behind, I'm not too sure what the reason was behind it, no, no. But after that, so you, you took your time, how long did you take your time out to realise, do you know what, I'm not going to, I'm not going to. Well, anyway. yeah, I went to the, um, to Brazil with the Olympic squad to train with them, like to sort of aspire and partner, get, get the boys ready. I had a couple of weeks out there with them, and, um, that, that was a brilliant experience, but still just hurt as much. And I'm watching them going, going to do it. It's kind of like training someone to take oh, your job, isn't it? Oh, that's what I so. mean. It's horrible. But um, yeah, so I've done that brilliant experience. Like, um, come back, had a couple of months off. Uh, went back in December sort of time, to, uh, September, uh, November, December time. Ended up competing in a couple of tournaments, a couple of little ones. Got a silver medal in Hungary, and then went to the European Under 22s, which was actually my biggest, my biggest tournament, and I won that. And then after that, I wiped my mouth. I just got, I couldn't do it no more. I was, I was gutted really because it's like your second family up there. Mm. Really, really good, like pals for life. Brilliant setup. Got the best out of me. Turned me into the boxer that I am. And um, having to leave because of like it's just it hurt too much. Like, but, yeah. So from the um, from your last amateur fight to your to turning pro, what um, talk to me about that like transition and you know. yeah. So my last fight was in April, uh, April 2017, and my my first pro fight was December. So I had a lot lot of time off, but that was mainly because I'd actually sorted a promoter within a month, two months. I was with Frank Warren, mm. so but. I went with Mark Tibbs, thought I'm going to get a good trainer behind me. My style was very amateur, very amateur, fast, uh, constant punches, like it was a bit jittery. It was very amateur style, I'd been, well, I'd been amateur for 10 odd years, so I had to snap out of that and I thought if I, if I dive in for a fight straight away, it's going to show, it's going to be obvious that I'm not, I'm not pro. So Mark stuck with me for a good few months, uh, we hammered out the kinks, well, I'm still doing it now, but yeah, he turned me into more of a professional, like a rugged professional. And um, now nah, it paid off because I ended up, I ended up stopping him in the first round. Uh, in the third round. Yeah. So how did, you, how did you get to Mark? And what, what was it? What was the? Uh, um, I'd, I'd always been, I've grown up looking at Mark and Jimmy, you know, like seeing the train uh, Billy Joe and all the other fighters they've done. And um, I don't know. I think they like. So I, I was drawn to that like rugged East East London like geezer sort of personality. And I knew I clicked with them. Always, I always did. And um, I'm not too sure how I got speaking to. Oh, that was it. One, a bloke, um, some agent bloke I know uh, from Newcastle. I said to him, "Listen, do you know any trainers down this way that I can get onto? That like, you got any contacts?" He went, "Yeah, but speak to Mark Tibbs." I thought, "Touch, that'd be me." Um, spoke to him. He invited me to come down. Uh, had one session with him. That was it. Yeah, I think I know because he gets me. You know, he, he was a pro himself. And he's more like not a, not a proper banger, but smart, sneaky, good good fighter. And he just gets me. He knows what I'm doing. He, yeah, he understands me, and that's I, I think that's why it works so well. <coughs> well, obviously, you know, you clearly got to go to good work, like that and stuff. So uh... I've got to say that. Oh, give me a clump. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite interested, like, how you transition from the amateur to the professional financially. How the setup is, like, nutrition wise, because obviously you get looked after. Course, quite yeah, well. yeah. Yeah, well, like I say, on GB, we do get really looked after. I mean, every, everything was covered. We got a good wage. Like, it was, it was very easy living, very easy living. 
So when you go pro, all of a sudden that's it's all gone. You can't, you think, I used to take for granted going to the physio, getting looked at after a session because I've got a little niggle in my knuckle, or a little niggle in my leg. Um, you take it for granted and all of a sudden you go and they're charging £40 a session to have you looked at and I thought, oh mate, this is going to be a bit vague. But also as a pro, it's a lot more, you get a lot more recognised, a lot more like, a lot more publicity around it. Um, you are widely recognised, more, more recognised. And um, so the sponsors come in and then obviously I, I went with a good promoter, I get good, a good fight wage. I, 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 do, I do well at the minute, but in that transition from April to December was hard, that was very hard. Um, I'm, I've always liked my cars and I like my clothes, I've always been quite a bit materialistic. And that for me killed me off a little bit, that, that little transition period. But it's paid off, yeah, it's paid off. That, that for me would be, so I, yeah, I look up to that, them lot and go to work and still train afterwards because this kills me, this kills me. But, yeah. How did you get to the show for Frank Warren? How did that come about? Um, Mark, Mark, yeah. Um, spoke to Mark, who, who do you want to go with? Who, who do you think about going with? And again, um, I'd watched Frank, I'd, I sort of had in my head that I was going to go with Warren in, if he would take me from the start. Because uh, I've grown up watching them, my dad has grown up watching like watching Warren shows, and it just um, yeah, I think it was just that sort of like old old school thing that drew me to it. But obviously, they've got that deal with BT Sport as well that was that was good for me. That was that's good. So yeah, I think I was just drawn to them, just drawn. That's it. Yeah. And then yeah, and Mark got me to meet him. Mark yeah, phone Mark up, uh, phone Frank up, had a meeting with him, and um, sorted it then and there. Said he wanted me, and yeah. Tell me about the first, the first actual professional fight. After after that uh, conclusion of it, um, did you start to think, right, this is this is what I want in the next couple of years, or you know, was Mark or were you like too eager and like, all oh, right, I want this, this, and this? Or yeah, you Mark know what? Kind of... Yeah, because I'd been fighting at such a high level for such a while with GB, I thought I was going to go into the pros, have a do a lump check, have a cut of fights, and end up winning lo winning loads of titles. But you've got to earn your stripes in the pro game, you? you've got to um, you've got to go through. You, you've got to sort of level up. You've got to fight them people that ain't that ain't so good. Work your way up. Work, build the rounds up. That's the main thing. I'm doing three rounds, like three threes, and now nah, all of a sudden jumping in sixes, eights, tens. You need to be able to do twelve rounds comfortably. So it's, I, I have got to, I, I've got to earn my stripes in this game. But with that first one, I was you could still see the amateur in me. You know, like wanted to wanted to get him quick, very jittery. But where it was only four, well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But it was the nerves as well, having like 300 odd people there. It looked like seeing all people you know come to watch you fight. Because when you're on GB, no one watches you. You're here, there, and everywhere. So I had them all there. Again, just a blur of nerves. Absolute blur what of nerves. Was your ring walk? My ring walk. Yeah, the I come out to um, Let Me Love You For Tonight. It's like an old school uh, house track. But I thought a lot of my crowd were like old school <laughs> geezers. So I thought they'd love it. But. Yeah, it was good because the West Ham game was playing that, that day as well, so they just come straight from the West Ham game. Most of them said they didn't see the fight. They were lagging, weren't they? But, yeah, really good experience. Brilliant, brilliant. But I thought, oh, yeah, I can do this. This is me. This is me. Yeah. And uh, obviously, from that, you've had, you've had obviously, um, various fights uh, since, and you know, you're obviously coming on to strength to strength. You've got your next fight. Do you want to tell us a little bit about uh, the next fight coming up? Yeah, I'm fighting on March the 8th at the Royal Albert Hall. It's um, obviously like an iconic, iconic venue. Iconic, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, everyone you speak to who's boxed there before, some of the older blokes. It's the first here. time for yeah. quite a few I think years. It's the second time in 20 years. Yeah, man. That's what I think it is. But you speak to a couple of the fellas that have been, been on there, they say it's unbelievable. So it's walking out to a Coliseum, you feel like you're going to battle. And um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, It'd it just be a venue, a venue that I really want to box at. But yeah, I'm, I'm only doing a four round of this one. I think we're, we're struggling a little bit to find an opponent my weight. Um, so we're just going to do a four round and get a run out. And then um, hopefully start cracking on. I'll be five and I'll then like six, seven, and I'll start challenging for titles. Start just so yeah, how, how many uh, fights potentially this year are you looking at? I want. I want to have at least at least four or five, at least four or five. If I can get four in and a title shot, or three in and a title shot, I'll be happy. Yeah, I want to get at least one ten rounder in this year, so you know, see, really see how I get on doing it. And then that's 
but Mark, is, you know, he's not trying to rush you. He's still. Yeah, yeah Mark. I f I'll be honest. I think Mark. Mark believes that I can. I can do the tens. I can do the eights and tens comfortably. And um, but it's about it's just taking my time. I, I'm still only 23, so I've got a long, a long, long time. So yeah, I think it, he's happy for me to plod at like sort of, sort of go at this sort of pace. But we are we do get frustrated sometimes because we feel like we see some of the fighters, some of some of the ones that are doing well in that. And we think we we can get in there and take that, but yeah, it's about pecking order at the minute. Uh, and your weight going forward, what would you would you sit for the next couple of years? I'm a flyweight. Yeah, uh, yeah, to... I am a flyweight. I mean, I mean, I've been fighting at bantamweight, super bantamweight. My last one was at feather, I think. But it's um, it's just it's, it's hard getting opponents in England at this weight. They just um, yeah. So you just got to sort of. I've got to make do with what I've got. Um, yeah, so, but when I do fight championship flyweights, even light flyweight, I could do. Or, but I would and super flyweight, so them three. So you got a couple of British guys, obviously. Uh, there, but I mean, have you thought about, or has Mark thought about, say, like maybe we'll take you abroad and get some get some experience there? On we, of... you know, we haven't really talked about it really, but that would be one of my sort of dreams. That I like to fly over to like Mexico and yeah. get him to see, because then you see how yeah. hard you really are, don't you? You get him on one of them geezers flying at you for, for ten rounds. You see what you're made of, and even in Asia, you've got oh some mate, yeah, but, yeah. So I mean, you, you go, you go that far afield, you're going to get quality, especially at my weight. Cause they're all tiny, aren't they? Really? So I would love to, I would love even to go there. Spar, you know, even sparring, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, we was going to go to Mexico, I think, after this fight, but for spring break. <laughs> no. That's slightly different. Yeah, from yeah I that's know. a different kind of sparring. Oh, the bummy gear, yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. I really, I would love to do that. It's, it is one of my dreams. Yeah. Fly over there, or like Japan, get in with them. Like, be good. Just quickly, so social media is quite a big thing now, and you've yeah. got a little bit of a head-to-head -head with Sunny. Oh, was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what's that about? What's... Um, you know what? It's it's been going on for ages. I mean, me and Sonny is actually pals. We we've been at the Repton together. We've we've known each other since we was about 12, 13. Yeah, always been. But he's always been he's like. From our age, is he? Oh, you South Londoners? Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, so yeah, it, we've known each other for years. But I've always been a year in front. Well, I say we're the same year in school, but I've been a year ahead in terms of championship fighting. So we've always been around the same weight. And um, I don't know, I got on, I got on GB first, I've done Moors at Amichan, and he's obviously you know, don't seem to have taken it that well. You see, but he's quite opinionated anyway, ain't he? I mean, he starts on everyone. I mean, poor Paddy Barnes, eh? he's been getting it off him. But the best thing, I think the best thing to do is just lay back until the fight's made, and then you can, then I can sort of come out and show a little bit with it. But yeah, I feel bad, because he's quite witty as well, isn't he? Like, he's, he's, good he's on ya, he's on ya. He's, he's on you. I see him with Paddy Barnes. Like, he, he must be fuming with him, Con constantly on his case, isn't he? But that's what I mean. It's all right doing that, that doing that. Then, but once the fight's made and you know, or you know, it's in the thing. Because I've still got a couple of, I've got to build up to ten rounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Once I'm at that sort of thing, then I can start going right. Like, now let's have it. You should back with Frank Warren. Of course, yeah. But it's, it'd be easy to make, really. Mm -hmm. It'd be easy to make. But um, I think that, that, that he will eventually want to make that, Frank. Definitely, because there's a lot of interest around it for a lot of for little, little blokes. Not yet, no, nah, no. Nah. Um, I think they, he just wants me to build up, yeah. and he wants me to have a couple. Because he's doing, he's he's done a couple of tens and that now. He's got a couple of parties behind him. Mm. I start calling him that now because of where I'm at. Yeah. I'm gonna look like a bit of a, a bit of a donut. There's no rushing. It's good nah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is building up nicely anyway. People want to see it. They want to see it. So you just got to let it stew, and then when it's actually in stone, then then up and come out and show. Yeah. But as for yeah, that's your question. I don't know where it started from. It just come out of nowhere. But he is opinionated, so it's not blown out, isn't it? Always does, always does. Yeah. It's good, yeah. Okay. Alright, well we've done um, twenty minutes. Twenty minutes? Yeah, that's flown by, isn't it? Yeah. Um, thanks for giving us some of your time. Um, we'll come down again and we when Mark's here and we'll do some like get some training footage and stuff. Um, before we go, do you wanna shout out sponsor social media? Uh, and what have you so people can follow you? Yes, I will, but I need to. <laughs> yeah, no, um, yeah, sponsors wise, I want to thank White Skip Hire, uh, Backers Nightclub, Ace of Lanes, um, Esquires. Uh, without them sort without them sponsors, I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Yeah, so they keep me in training, and any sort of success I have, I'll phone to them. So thank yous. And any social media? 
Social media is oh, it's just yeah, it's just my tag, ain't it? Harvey Horn. It is at Harvey yeah. Horn, yeah, for everything. But, um, and only girls on Snapchat. So. <laughs> cool, nice one, mate. Cheers. Awesome.